Okay, so things are starting to get a little bit interesting and exciting now. We're going to move on to texturing. Now, in order to create textures, we need to use another tool within Maya, which is called the Hypershade. And we need to open that up. So, um, the Hypershade has been revamped a little bit. So, if you are an older Maya user, it'll look a little bit different. It freaked me out when I first um, used it, but I feel I'm all right with it now. Uh, now, there are two ways of opening this up, obviously. Um, so, you can click on this little chapter here, which is just the, the quick... Uh, way of getting to it, or you can click on Windows um, and Rendering Editors, and Hypershade is in there. So I'm going to open that up, uh, and hopefully, because I've reset the defaults in Maya, it should just show me um, a default Hypershade, which it has. So I'm just going to maximize this. And as with anything in Maya, it's a good idea to get it set up so that it's how you want it to be before you start working in it. Uh, and what I want is a little viewport so I can actually see my scene within the hypershade because it's a bit of a pain in the bottom if you can't see what you're actually texturing. So in order to do that you can click on window and I would like to open up a viewport and you can see it opens up a very very small viewport but as you can see that viewport actually shows you your scene aces. What you can also do with that is you can drop it into your UI somewhere. You can see as I'm moving it around, it, it's saying, oh, you can stick it here. No, no, put it here. Yeah, which is really good. And I like it to be here. So I'm just going to click and drag, and then I'm going to release when it's going to go there, which is lovely. And then I'm just going to drag some of the windows around a touch just to make that viewport a little bit bigger and manageable. Okay. And then, just whilst your mouse is in that window, press 5 to turn on hardware shading. And now you've got a, a good idea of what you're applying your textures to. Okay, so this is your hypershade. You can see that we've got the viewport in there. There's a material viewer here. And what this is, is it's a shape that previews what a material is going to look like when you apply it. So it starts with this weird shader ball thing, which is actually quite good because it shows you lots of different surfaces on one shape. But you could also look what it's going to look like on cloth. You can look what it's going to look like on a teapot, if you're into teapots. Um, you might also look what it looks like um, if it was on a water type splash. Uh, but I'm always quite happy with the shader ball. You've got the property editor here, which once you've created a new material, that's where you change the appearance of it. Um, this is your workspace. So this is where all the sort of advanced linking of materials happens. This is kind of, we'll just use this tab at the moment, which shows all your completed materials and this is the create area where you create new materials so we are going to create a material and the first material that we are going to make is for uh, the projector so i'm going to have a look in my create um, panel i'm going to go to surface and what i would like is a new blin uh, and what a blin is is it contains uh, properties such as shine well it'll let you make it shiny reflective etc um, the kind of opposite to that is a Lambert. We have a Lambert one assigned to everything already. Uh, and that is like a matte texture. So if you think of a painted wall, that would be like Lambert one. And one thing to keep in mind as well is never ever edit Lambert one. Because if I was to make this green, everything in the scene would now go green. Because that is the default texture that is already applied. So you should try and leave that alone if you can. So I'm going to create a new blin. Like so. And... Um, what I'm going to do with this blin is I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it Projector M. And the reason I put the M on is just so that I know that that represents a material. Like that. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to change the colour of this material. So in my property editor, you can see that there's colour here. Now there's the slider, so I could just make it either black or white. Or... I can click on the actual colour rectangle here, which I'm told is called a swatch, uh, and I can choose a colour. Now, I quite like a uh, really deep blue. Um, I think that looks quite nice. Yeah, so I'm going to choose that kind of colour. And again, you can preview what that looks like on different materials just to get an idea of um, how that's going to come out. But I'll keep it on the shader ball. The next thing I'm going to do is change how this reacts to light. What I want this to look like when it's assigned is kind of a, uh, a glossy plastic look um, that Apple seemed to favour in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I'm going to try and replicate that as sort of really shiny plastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the specular colour. I'm going to make that a much lighter grey. Um, 
and that should make you can only just really see it changing but it makes the highlights a little bit brighter so I'm going to go quite towards the right hand side on that I'm also going to change the eccentricity to 0.1 and you should notice when you press enter that the uh, the highlights the way it looks like the lights being reflected gets a lot more focused there you go so it's now a lot more sort of um, shiny looking it looks more polished I'm also going to change the specular roll off to 0 0.85 and that will just make those highlights become a little bit stronger when I press enter there we go and the last thing I'm going to do is change the reflectivity to 0 0.3 now you won't actually see an effect um, of this in your material preview but when we start rendering later it will just mean that um, this will reflect um, objects off it but the reflections won't be too strong because we don't want it to look like a mirror so I'm just going to change that to 0 0.3 okay now that that material is complete we're going to assign it to the uh, projector geometry now of course there are multiple ways of doing this uh, but the first way we're going to do is just uh, by dragging it on so here you can see there is our projector material and here is our projector so in order to assign that material to it I'm going to using my middle mouse button click on the projector and then I'm going to drag over the projector here and I'm going to release and then you will see that that material is now assigned and if we move around we can see how that works where all the sort of um, reflections of the light are going to go so yeah really nice I'm happy with that